this land. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful is the land. Be alone is worthy. Oh, the Abashia. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Holy, holy. 
Lord of all. You
Kurisa lava budushi ni baba di ni bari me si muru kya baba di ni mo musi ni musi ni musi ni ogia me krinja risi ni prid kavo simon di si lava ni ava mi ava ni osa mi asa di kiam di kiam di kiam. Si o tu, ma crisa, ma crosa, la viana, brea si che lo so, ma in clare volta baida.
There are times and there are seasons. Wait, wait. I say wait. I will reveal myself and you will know. You will know. You will know that it is me. We are going by a new road, a new way, a new season, a new time. Stay, stay in me, stay in me. I will show you the way. I will direct you, I will lead you, and I will take you along the path with, with me. I will show you. You will see it. You will see it. I will make, I will make your path plain, says the Lord. You will know the way to go. You will see it clearly, God. You will see it clearly. Thank you, Lord. Cry out. Cry out. Cry out. Cry out. Cry out. Cry out to me. I will show you the way. I will show you the way. I will
Hallelujah. The lights are coming on in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo! Somebody bless the Lord in this place. Amen. Wow, let me say that again. Somebody bless the Lord in this place. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. You know, some may ask. Why did we just take the time that we took on the prayer carpet? And I think we need to understand this as a body. There's a blessing for those who linger. How many are willing to receive that in the Lord? There's a blessing for those who linger. God is wanting to do something very different in this house. The invitation that he's giving us is an invitation that he's given to houses all over this region. We need to understand this. It's an invitation that he's given to houses all over our state, all over our nation, and throughout the earth. But the Lord says, although he's given the invitation to many houses, only few houses will accept what it is that he's offering. I don't know how many really heard that in their spirits. The Lord said very few houses are going to be willing to accept what he's offering, and it's an offering to linger. Are you willing to receive that in the Lord? Because there is a blessing for those who linger. Mary was the first one to meet Jesus after he rose again because she lingered at the tomb after everybody else left. And the Lord is asking us in the season, are we willing to linger? Are we willing to linger in the secret place? Are we willing to linger in our services? Are we willing to linger when we go down the road and his presence fills our vehicles? Are we willing to linger? How are we going to ask to answer that question, church? Are we willing to linger? Amen. Yes. Yes. That was not rhetorical. Are we willing to linger? Because there's a blessing for those who linger. You know, I heard the Lord say while I was on the prayer carpet, and maybe this word was just for me, but the Lord said, don't resist the change that I'm bringing. Okay, maybe it's for other people in the room too. The Lord said, don't resist the change that I am birthing, that I am bringing, that I am releasing. He says, do not resist the change. You know, I realized as we were on the prayer carpet and, and we were just lingering before the Lord, I realized a few things that I already knew, but Holy Spirit reminded me. It was a fresh realization. And one of the things was this. This is not the way you build a church in the traditional mindset. This is not the way that it happens. Everything I was ever taught about church building, this isn't it. This is the opposite direction. But it's exactly what the Lord wants because unless the Lord builds the house, they that build it labor in vain. And he's building the house and he's building the house. Can I hear an amen? Amen. God is calling us to a 2022 that's going to be vastly different than we could ever think or imagine or try to picture. It's going to be completely different. As we heard Thursday night, there's going to be some very uncomfortable things that are going to go on in 2022. But the Lord says to hold tightly to the hem of his garment and know that in the midst of uncomfortable things, God's going to do great things. Hallelujah. So in retrospect, begin to look at your life in 2021. And I can guarantee you in the Lord that it's not going to look anything like that in 2022. If you're wanting to do this thing God's way, God wants to ruffle the feathers. God wants to change your schedule. God wants to become inconvenient. God wants to call you to fasting. God wants to bring you into realms that you've never been into before. But none of those things are going to happen without surrender. Right. 
And the Lord is saying to you today, will you surrender to me? He's asking those online this morning, okay, afternoon, will you surrender to me? And that's the question that we have to have in front of us as God's people right now. Are we going to surrender to the Lord? I mentioned at the beginning of the service this morning, the Lord was saying, the last two weeks of this year are crucial. They are weeks of extreme preparation in the Lord. He wants to begin to do things in you in these next two weeks that are going to set the tone, the momentum for what's coming in 2022. If you resist in these next two weeks, you're going to resist what he's going to do throughout the new year. If you surrender to what he's wanting you to do in these next two weeks, that's going to prepare you to be in a place of surrender for what is coming. Amen. The choice is up to us. I've been in ministry for, for about 20 years now. I don't want a repeat of the time that remains of what has been in the past. I want the new thing that God is doing. Amen. And this day, I'll be honest, as God was doing some of the things that he was doing, I was examining my own heart, going, Lord, I'm sensing places of resistance. And I had to surrender to the Lord afresh and anew and say, yes, Lord, I want this new thing that you're doing. But it's not going to look like anything we've ever seen him do before. It's not going to look like the revivals of the past. It's not going to look like your comfort zone or what it's been. It's not going to look like the church that you've experienced in the past. In fact, the Lord wants to radically change even your relationship with him in every single way to take you deeper, to deal with the rooms and the chambers of your heart that you've yes. never allowed him to get into, yes. to go to the places that yes. you've resisted him in, yes. levels of surrender you've never been willing to go into yes. in previous seasons. Yes. And the Lord is saying, and yes, in this season, I'm pointing at things that I never spoke to you about in previous seasons. Amen. The Lord is saying, don't say to me, you never, that was never an issue prior. It was an issue, it's just now the time. Amen. <laughs> you weren't ready for it to be an issue. But it was always an issue to the Lord, especially if it was a holiness issue. Because the Lord is calling us into a deeper walk of holiness. You've heard me say this before in the Holy Spirit. Holiness, purity, and the fear of the Lord are going to be the three marks of this great revival that's yeah. coming. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything in our lives right now in this season that are the opposite of those things, that war against those things, holiness, purity, and the fear of the Lord, the Lord is jealously removing those things right now. So don't be surprised if he begins asking for things that he hasn't asked for in previous seasons. Don't be surprised if he starts digging in areas that he's never dug in before. Don't be surprised if he starts asking you for things he's never asked for before because now is the time. Amen. And the Lord says in this new season we're coming into, being a people of his timing is crucial. Not our timing, but his timing. When we were worshiping today, I heard the Lord mentioning, oh, in his earthly ministry, when his brothers came to him and said, we're going to the feast, why don't you come with us? And Jesus said, I can't go to the feast. It's not the Father's time. And they started mocking him and making fun of him. And when they were done, the Lord looked at them and said, you go to the feast anytime is right for you. But I must stay in the timing of the Father. So the Lord is saying in this new season, not your timing, but his timing. <clears throat> in what he's going to do corporately, not our timing, but his timing. And was he saying that in the very word that he released through his servant Rob in this place today? Was that not it? Amen. His timing. It was much like the word God released a couple of years ago, but in a new form. His way, his time, his connections, his alignment, and he is going to show us his way. Do you receive that in the Lord? Amen. Amen. And I really believe in the Lord. There's many things in the realm of the Spirit that are coming in the season. There's many things going on within you that are coming in the season. There's many things going on in this house that are coming in the season. And when something comes in the season, that time 
is not like any of the other previous seasons. Because when it comes in the season, it's time for it to bear fruit. Amen. And the Lord says there's things that He's been working on in your spirit. There's seeds that He's planted. There's things that He's caused to seemingly die that are now putting down roots and are shooting up and they're yeah. going to bear fruit in this new season. Yeah. The Lord says that's not going to be comfortable. That's not going to be comfortable. We need to understand this. God's talking about amazing things for 2022. But 2022, mark this, will be the year that the Lord calls you out of your comfort zone. Amen. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm just going to resist the temptation. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord says this is the year that he's going to call you out of your comfort zone. Amen. The Lord says, I want you to approach the beginning of this new year like no other time. These next two weeks are weeks of preparation. Yeah. But Lord, we've got Christmas. And Lord, we're doing this. And Lord, this is planned. And Lord, this is going on. Lord, we've got our plans. The Lord says, your plan or his plan, you need to choose. Yeah. We need to choose in this hour. But he's, he's because he's calling us to a deeper level of surrender. Yeah. The Lord says, I will no longer allow you to fit me into your schedule. Give me your schedule. Amen. He says, I want to be the schedule. Yes. And in the season, in love, the Lord is saying, I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God. Mm -hmm. yes. And you will see my jealousy in this upcoming year. In my jealousy, you will see me build things up and tear things down. You will see me uproot things and you will see me plant things. The Lord says that will happen all around you and that will happen within you, but be not dismayed. Because the Lord says, I'm giving you that word right now and I want this word to prepare your hearts. The Lord says, mark this word, you're coming in the season. The Lord says, for those that are hearing this word, there's ministries that you've been waiting for God to release you into. The Lord says, it's time. But the Lord says, I will do the releasing. I will open up the doors. I will make it happen. Then, Lord, what do you need from me? The Lord says, I need your cooperation. I need your surrender. And I need your willingness, the Lord is saying. Come on. I need your cooperation. I need your surrender. I need your willingness. The Lord says, if you won't, I can't. He says, if you won't in this upcoming year, I can't. The Lord says, I'm the God, the Lord God Almighty. I see the end from the beginning. Yes. The Lord says, I already see what's going to happen in this upcoming year. Your level of surrender is going to determine how much is going to take place. Amen. And the Lord says, I want you to surrender to me. No more doing it your way and a little bit of my way. No more half obedience because the Lord says, that's not obedience at all. The Lord says, I want you to come into a place this year of total obedience. He's saying to the church in this hour, stop trying to fit me into the convenient box in your life that you've kept me in. I want out and I want to show you that I'm the all-consuming fire. Yes. Yes. And I'm going to burn everything up that I'm not pleased yes. with. Yes. And I'm going to purify that that is. Yes. He says, this is the year of Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Will you step into the fiery furnace? Yes. Because the Lord says, if you will step into the furnace of affliction, the Lord says, I will burn off your bonds and you will walk with one that looks like the Son of Man amidst the flames. Has anybody received that in the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying this is going to be a year of great change. He said, do not enter this year with the same attitudes, the same opinions, and the same level of surrender that you did 2021. He says, my church, my people have been held back by COVID and a COVID mindset and the spirit of COVID long enough. Amen. Because let me tell you what has come with COVID. And I'm not trying to delegitimize the fact that it's an illness. 
It's a virus. People have died from it. I'm not trying to delegitimize that. But what I'm saying is the Lord has said his people have hidden behind COVID and COVID has become an excuse for not moving the kingdom forward. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. We can't go out and do this. We can't say that. We can't do this outreach. We can't do this. We can't do that. The Lord says I'm unmasking my people. Amen. Amen. Yeah. See, we've got to understand as we came into the year 2021, the Lord was saying it was the year of the pay in the Hebrew. It was the year of the mouth, actually 2020 and 2021. It was the year where God's people were to, to declare and to speak and to release what God was saying. So what was the enemy's response? Yes. <laughs> to mask the people of God. And the Lord says what came with COVID was the spirit of staying home. Uh -huh. What came with COVID was the spirit of hiding. What came with COVID was the spirit of laziness. Uh -huh. The Lord said what came with COVID was to hinder the move that I was releasing, the Lord says. Because the Lord says whenever I release a move, so does the enemy. But the Lord says in 2022, the move of the enemy will no longer mask my move, God says. So the Lord is saying the masks are coming off in 2022. Yes. But the Lord isn't just talking about the mask. The Lord is talking about the mask. Yes. And it's a year where God is going to lay hearts bare. Mm -hmm. It's a year where God is going to expose things. Yeah. It's a year in which God is going to shout from the rooftops things that have been done in secret. Mm -hmm. Church, I want to encourage you, and this is not a message of condemnation. This is a message of encouragement. Mm -hmm. In the next two weeks that are left, Get on your face before the Lord yes. Yes. and surrender to him, repent before him yes. and give him the things that you know are going to hinder you in 2022. Yes. Amen. You're either going to fall on the rock and be broken or the rock is going to fall upon you and you're going to be crushed mm -hmm. in what is coming. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage you in the time that's left before we go into 2022, fall on the rock. Amen. Yes. Fall on the rock. Yes. Because the things that we refuse to surrender as Holy Spirit is speaking so clearly like right now mm -hmm. are the things that can become roadblocks and hindrances and issues to the amazing things that are being released by the Lord even now yes. for this upcoming year. Yes. Yes. Even as I heard the Holy Spirit saying that, I heard people on their knees crying out to the Lord, Lord, I'm ready. Lord, I want my ministry. Lord, I want you to use me. Lord, I know it's time. Lord, I, 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 I. The Lord says, this is not going to be the year of the I. It's going to be the year of Yahweh. Amen. The Lord said, this is the year where I'm going to open up your eyes. Yes. And you're going to see that it's not about what you've wanted. It's about what I've wanted. Amen. Yes. I can't say this urgently enough. The Lord is saying right now, many, many in the valley of decision. The Lord says, come out of the valley of decision into the place of surrender. And watch what I will begin to do. Amen. The Lord says, no longer do I want you to tell me what's on the schedule. I will tell you what's on the schedule. I will disrupt and I will move yes. things and I will become inconvenient and I will change things yes. and I'm going to completely reorder your steps yes. in this new year. Wow. And the Lord says, even as this word is being released, some are deciding in their hearts, are they going to receive this word or are they going to reject this word? The Lord says there's some, even as this word is being released, that are fighting this word in their hearts. Folks, this isn't a word that, that I wrote out and planned out that I heard from God weeks ago. This is what I hear the Lord saying right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. The Lord say, says, do you love me enough to lay down your other lovers? Do you love me enough to let me become inconvenient to you? Do you love me enough to allow me to change your plans? He says, for man plans, but I direct the steps. Hallelujah. And the Lord says, this year, I'm going to direct your steps if you will let me. But if you won't let me, then I will stop directing. Oh. 
The Lord's very serious about this. And I know after we are just sucking carpet, you can handle this word. And this word is as much for what's going on in me as it is for you right now. I, I'm just telling you, I want to be honest with you because I have found myself resisting. As much as I have longed for what's here now, have longed for what's coming, I'm realizing that what I longed for was what I wanted to see. And I've had to wrestle with laying that down so that God can do it the way that he wants to do it. Mm -hmm. What are you wrestling with in your heart right now that is seemingly a good desire for something God wants to do, but you're not letting him do it? Come on. Because he says this way, this year it's his way, his timing, his alignment, his move. His work, and he will receive all the glory, yes. the Lord yes. says. Yes. The Lord says in this upcoming year, less entertainment and more time in his presence. Mm -hmm. yes. It starts yes. now. The Lord says in this upcoming year, less eating and more fasting. Mm -hmm. yes. The Lord says in this upcoming year, less of the things that we have been doing and more of the things that he wants us to do. Yes. And I'm going to say this in love. I heard the Lord say, I'm so tired of what pe what my people are calling me time. I need me time. I need me time. The God says, I'm sick and tired of me time. It's time for, it's time for, oh, for his bride to be so hungry and so thirsty that time with him is the overwhelming desire of her heart. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell on my wife for a moment. I'm going to embarrass her for just a tiny bit. Yeah, it looks like I can get away with it here. Um, I was talking with my co-workers on the way out the door Friday night, and they were asking, what are you going to do this weekend? And, and my boss's joke with me is, are you going to spend quality time with Mrs. Hall? Because I'll say the same thing to him about his wife. You're going to spend quality time with Mrs. Schmidt. And, and so they're asking me that. And, and I just said, you know, it's kind of interesting. I said, this entire weekend will be spent with the Lord and with my wife, with my family. I said, when I get home on Friday, my wife is attached to my hip from the moment I get home to the moment I go to work Monday morning. And they just smiled. Yeah. <laughs> And it was funny, as if I could hear my wife speaking in my ear as I said that, I heard her voice saying, and I'd have it no other way. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because my wife didn't get married to be alone. Mm -hmm. My wife married me because she wanted a companion. Yes. She wanted a life partner. She wanted godly headship. Yes. She wanted to know she's protected and provided for and safe. Aren't these things that we should all be desiring as the bride of Christ? Isn't that why we want marriage to Jesus? Because we love to be with him? Because he's our headship? Because he's our protection? Because he's our provision? The Lord says he wants us to come into a... In, in 2022 with a completely different mindset. No more dating Jesus. 2022 is the year of marriage to the king. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, and I'm going to say this in love because I heard the Lord say this a couple years ago. And I'm really beginning to understand what he said. I heard him say once when I was spending time with him in the secret place is I was reading in the Old Testament where the Lord accused Israel of prostitution. He says, you prostituted yourself under every shade tree and in every high place. And I was reading that and my heart was grieving and I stopped reading the word and I was just feeling the grieving in my heart and then the grieving in God's heart. And I heard God say, tell my church to stop treating me like a prostitute. Amen. And I said, Lord, I'm going to need some understanding on that. The Lord says, this is what it is. A man has a need. He goes out and he picks up a prostitute. I mean, this is graphic, but I heard the Lord say this. Are we okay? Yeah. He gets his needs met 
he releases the money and then he drops her off and goes home. Mm -hmm. The Lord says, my people have been doing that to me. Yep. And I'm their bridegroom. I'm not a prostitute. Yeah. They come on Sunday morning and they pick me up and they get what they need and they leave their money and they go home. Yeah. The Lord said, and I am the Lord your God. I am holy and I am not a prostitute. And I will not allow my church to prostitute me any longer. I want a bride dressed in white without spot and wrinkle, longing for her bridegroom and never wanting to spend a moment apart from him. Amen. Does that word get home to anybody yes. in the room? Amen. The Lord says no more treating him like a prostitute. He wants the highest place. Amen. Philippians 2, the word says that the Lord Jesus found himself being in fashion as a man. Therefore, he humbled himself and became obedient to the cross, even and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. The Lord says this is the year to humble ourselves and become obedient to death. Because this is the year that we're going to die so that Jesus might live through us. The Lord does not work through through live people. The Lord works through dead men. Amen. And we've got to understand this. But the Lord says, after he surrendered to the cross in obedience, therefore God the Father exalted him and gave him a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should, should bow in heaven and earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Lord says, don't go into this year making the mistake of thinking it's only about dying. We're dying so that we might live. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord says this year, if we will humble ourselves and be willing to die to our dreams and our wants and our me time and our desires, the Lord says, as we humble ourselves before him, he will lift us up. Yes. And the Lord says, as we do that, the Lord says, I have decreed and declared from my throne new levels for you, higher levels of glory and anointing and power. The Lord says there's some in this room that are going to have visitations from him in 2022. Mm -hmm. The Lord says there's some in this room that are going to have angels come to their bedside in 2022. Amen. The Lord said there's some in this room that are going to experience the breakthrough that you've been crying out to him for decades for. The Lord says, I'm going to change in a moment what you've struggled with for decades. But the Lord says the breakthrough will be found in the surrender. The Lord says the healing will be found in the dying. The Lord says the outpouring will be found in the fasting. It's going to be a year where the opposite of everything your flesh feels should happen is going to happen. Amen. And we're going to find the gateway and the pathway this year to everything God wants to release is going to lead us through what we think is the opposite it should in order to get us there. Amen. Come on. Amen. The Lord says, you want me to fill you up and fast. What? Yes. What? How, how, how does that work? You want to live than die. What? What, what? what? You want more of me? Then give me more of you. What? See, the Lord makes it plain in the Word. He says, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. He doesn't say, I'll draw near to you first, then you draw near. He said, no, out of hunger and thirst and desperation, you step towards me first and I'll then step towards you. Come on. Come on. The Lord says we have rights in the new covenant under his blood that we have not walked in that are going to be activated through surrender this year. That are going to be activated in fasting this year. They're going to be activated in obedience this year that we're going to begin to see some things that we've been asking for for so many years begin to manifest. Do you receive that? Yeah. But it's not going to happen if we enter into the new year with the same heart, 
the same attitudes, and the same lack of willingness to surrender. God says, I want you to enter into 2022 on your faces before me, the Lord says. And you will see that I am the great I am, and I will be whom I will be. The Lord says this is the year where we're going to understand out of Corinthians, the kingdom of heaven is not a kingdom of talk, but of power, yes. of action, of moving forward. The Lord says this year, you're not just going to be the hearers of the word, you're going to be doers of the word also. The Lord says it is time, the Lord says. But the Lord says, like a man winding an old-fashioned clock, as you wind the clock in obedience and surrender to me, watch as I begin to set things in motion. Amen. Does anybody want this in the Lord? Yes. Does anybody want this in the Lord? Yes. But the Lord is saying this to us again. We don't have time any longer to say next year. Mm -hmm. We don't have time any longer to say next decade. We don't have time any longer if you're 20s to say in my 30s, I'm going to be willing to do this. The Lord says we do not have that much time because the time is short. Mm -hmm. And we can say today, well, why is the time short? Because we're coming into the fullness of all things. Yes. If we watch what's going on in Israel and what's gone on in Israel since 1948, we're going to realize in 1948 when Israel became a nation again, Papa started the time clock ticking. Yes. And it's the time clock for the return of Jesus. The Lord yes. says, I'm going to return in the time of the fullness of all things. The Lord says we're coming into the fullness of all things. And the Lord says in this upcoming year, if you surrender to him, he's going to bring you into your fullness. Because the Lord says there's many in this room and there's many that are going to hear this broadcast. They came expecting a sermon, but instead they're getting a word from the Lord. The Lord said that he wants us to understand this. The level of your surrender this year is going to be directly in proportion with the level in which God moves in your life this year. Purpose in your heart to surrender everything. The Lord says this year is the year of the prophet Daniel. He said, Daniel, in chains and in bondage and in a place he didn't want to be, caught up in the judgment on his generation, on the way to Babylon, purposed in his heart, he would not defile himself with the king's meat and the king's wine. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is saying to us in this hour, if Daniel can make a decision to honor me while in chains and desperation and brokenness, mm -hmm. My people can do the same thing coming into this new year. He says in this new year, I want you to purpose in your heart now that you will not partake of the spirit of the age mm -hmm. in 2022. That you will not partake in the spirit of the Antichrist mm -hmm. in 2022. That you will not partake in the spirit of religion in 2022. That you will not partake in, and I've got to have my time in 2022. Mm -hmm. The Lord says, I want you to purpose in your heart right now that you're going to completely surrender to me in everything in 2022. Is anybody willing to purpose in your heart right now? Yes. Yes. Is anybody willing to purpose in your heart that in 2022, no matter what happens, you're not going to give up? Yes. That in 2022, no matter what happens, you're not going to shift out of the river. Yes. I hear the Lord saying, and I know the Lord was speaking this very directly to some folks in this room, especially a young lady who's worshiping right about here. I heard the Lord say, I'm bringing you into 2022 with momentum that you have not had in previous years. Do not step out of that move and that momentum 
God says move forward. I see for every act of obedience that you give the Lord, the Lord's opening up a door in front of you. The Lord says now is no, it's no longer the time to hide. It's no longer the time to sit in dissatisfaction. It's no longer the time to say next year or do you remember what it was like in the previous years? Mm -hmm. The Lord says an open door is in front of you. Mm -hmm. Go through with all your heart yeah. and don't look back because no one is fit for the kingdom of God that puts his hand on the plow and then looks back. Mm -hmm. The Lord says in this year, you're learning how to delight yourself in me again. And watch if I don't give you the desires of your heart. Yes. I see God moving in every sphere of your life in 2022. Keep surrendering. You've stepped out these last two Sundays. Keep moving forward, woman of God. I'm proud of you in the Lord. Like a proud dad. I'm proud of you in the Lord. And I tell you what, as a servant shepherd in this house, I am so proud of some folks in this house that have been stepping out and they've been willing to do things this year that they've never been willing to do before. I'm so thankful for you guys. But the Lord now says, I want to move this whole body forward as one person. No longer a little surrender over here and some over there and pockets of things going on. God said, I want to bring a unity and surrender upon this body. The Lord says, we have asked for Psalm 133 over and over again. We've prayed it. We've quoted it. We've elamatoed it. We believe for it in the Lord. The Lord says, now it's time for us to become Psalm 133. And the Lord says that happens as we begin to realize we're all part of one body. And if one part of the body doesn't surrender, it affects the entire body. God says, I want this house in 2022 to move as one body. I want you to think about this now. That when it's time for praise, we move forward as one body. When it's time for worship, we press in as one one body. Come on now. Yes. When it's time to receive, we receive as one body. Yes. Come on now. When it's time to reach out, we reach out as one body. Yes. God says, I'm going to bring forth a unity like we never have ever imagined before. And there's going to be a power in that unity. Yes. Well, yeah. I'm going to say this in love. There's been at work in the earth in the last year and a half a move of what man is calling unity, but it's really not unity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's division and it's separation. Mm -hmm. Know my heart as I say that. Yes. God, and that is just a counterfeit move to the move of real unity yes. that God is beginning to release. Mm -hmm. That starts as we bring our hearts in the unity with his. Yes. Yes. Amen. He says, I want you to surrender your heart and bring it in the unity with mine, the Lord says. Because the Lord says, remember Laodicea, I said to them they were pitiful, poor, blind, wretched, and naked, but I counseled for them to buy from me gold refined in the fire. How do you find, why do you buy gold refined in the fire when you're pitiful, poor, blind, wretched, and naked with the only currency that really matters to God, the currency of the heart? Yes. Amen. And the Lord says, I want you to surrender your heart to my heart. And when that happens, you're going to begin to love what I love and hate what I hate. The Lord says, you're going to begin to feel what I feel. And the Lord says, you're going to begin to grieve when I grieve. Mourn when I mourn, dance when I dance, shout when I shout. The Lord says, no longer is my spirit going to have to realign you back into that place with my heart because you will stay walking in alignment with my heart. Did I not say unless two walk together, how, how can two walk together unless they agree? The Lord says, I will bring you into agreement with my heart and you will walk in oneness with me like never before. But what I see is individual hearts coming into agreement and unity with Jesus' heart 
And then I see all of the hearts coming together in this body as one. And when that begins to happen, we will move as one. The earth talks about mob mentality. There's a unity mentality in the Lord. Where we begin to move, and as we move like that, we will shift together as a body in services as Holy Spirit leads. Amen. Come on. We'll go out and minister, and we'll move together as one. Come on. Amen. It's going to be incredible in the Lord. How many want that? Amen. Amen. And I hear the Lord saying in this house, we'll be multifaceted, multicultural, multigenerational, multidimensional. God is saying some amazing things are coming, but he wants us to do everything from this point on very intentionally. Mm -hmm. He says, do everything in your life from this moment on very intentionally. And the Lord says, allow me to examine the motives of your heart. Yes, the Lord says, this is the year that I want you to cry out to me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you. Lord, search me and know me and show me if there's any wicked way inside of me. Lead me in the pathways of righteousness, Lord. The Lord is saying, this is the year where he wants us to completely surrender our hearts to him. That's not a Sunday morning thing. That's not a Thursday night thing. That's an every moment thing that he's asking for. I heard the Lord say last night while I was hanging out with family, I heard the Lord say, I want to teach you how to walk in my presence 24-7. I said, Lord, I love the sound of that. What does that look like? The Lord said, if you're willing, I will teach you. How many know if that word was for me, that word was for everybody in this house? Yeah. He wants to teach us what real relationship with him looks like. In the church, we're not taught relationship. We're taught a system. Come on. I mean, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. And the Lord says, I did not create my bride for the for a system. I created her for the bridegroom. I created her for myself. We've been taught three songs, an offering, two songs, a quick word. You, you give a little bit, you go out thinking you're great. God said, that's not relationship, that's religion. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Lord says, hearing my word and then going forth out of the house. And being like a man who looked in the mirror and then turned around and forgot what he looked like, that's not relationship. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, going home and giving him a little piece of our time like you tip a waitress at a restaurant is not relationship. Mm -hmm. The Lord says, I want to teach you what relationship really looks like. And I just heard Holy Spirit say, it looks like the Garden of Eden. Prior to the fall, mm -hmm. Holy Spirit says, that is what relationship with me looks like. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit said, and I came every night and I walked with them in the cool of the garden. Yeah. They walked in my shalom every moment. Every need they had was provided for and they stayed in my presence continually. Mm -hmm. um, how many want that? The Lord said this year he wants to take us through two hmm, through two areas of the word relationally. I heard the Lord say I want to take you through the song of songs. And I will teach you that my name is like perfume poured out. I will teach you that you are a garden enclosed and I will teach you how to deal with the little foxes that spoil the vineyards. Mm -hmm. And the Lord says, then I want to take you out of the song of songs and through understanding my heart for you as a lover in the song of songs, I will take you through John chapter 15. Mm -hmm. And you will now understand that I am the vine and you are the branches. Mm -hmm. And in me, you will begin to bear much fruit. How many receive that in the Lord? Amen. The Lord says it's time. 
And the Lord says, do not be surprised in this upcoming year if I don't change your plans. <laughs> because the Lord says many of us are planners. We're already thinking into the new year. We're already planning what's going on. We're already trying to figure out when this is going to happen and how this is going to start and when this is going to go on. The Lord says those are wonderful things. You plan, but I direct the steps. And the Lord says, don't be surprised in this upcoming year if I don't seemingly bring death to things that you so much desire only to bring them back to life my way. The Lord says, do you not know that Lazarus died one way, but he rose completely another? Because the Lord said he was never the same after I raised him. 21, I am causing you to die. But in 2022, you're going to come out of the grave of addiction and affliction and woundedness and rejection and the orphan spirit. Oh, and you just fill in the blank. God says, I am going to cry out, take off the grave clothes. And you're going to begin to walk like you've never walked before. The Lord says even now for some, don't listen to the lie the enemy's about to tell you as you hear those words. Don't listen to the enemy when he tries to tell you. This year will be just like last year. The Lord says I'm doing a new thing in you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you hallelujah that and that's the right response. I hear Holy Spirit saying, a new place of surrender, yes. a new place of obedience, mm -hmm. a new place of relationship, yes. a new place of dying. Mm -hmm. He says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Do I not declare it before I bring it forth? The Lord says from the throne, he's declared for this upcoming year, the places where you've walked in disobedience, you're going to walk in obedience this year. Amen. The place that you've walked in frustration is going to become easy for you yeah. this year. Yeah. The Lord says the place where you've been crying out in affliction is going to be the place where the oil of healing flows this year. The Lord says this upcoming year will be a year of sharp contrast yes. to 2022. Yes. But the Lord is also saying, you must choose the shift. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You must choose the move. Yeah. You must choose the new thing that I'm doing. Yes. Yes. And right now, the Lord is saying, is the time of surrender. Yes. The Lord is saying, right now is the time of surrender. Yes, Lord. The Lord is saying, right now is the time of surrender. Yes, Lord. I have some time off here coming up in the next couple of weeks. I work a couple of days this upcoming week. Mm -hmm. And this morning on the prayer carpet, I heard the Lord saying, you're going to fast this day, and you're going to fast this day, and you're going to fast this day, and you're going to fast this day. Mm -hmm. You know what I've always loved doing around the holidays? <laughs> <laughs> That's disruptive. Right. Yes. That's going to mess with my plans a little bit. <laughs> That's not going to be easy. But like we heard Thursday night, the Lord is saying, I don't care that it's Christmas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Lord, Christmas is all about you, is it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it? That's why we don't have a Christmas tree in this house. That's why we don't have decorations in this house. Mm -hmm. Jesus yeah. is the object of our affection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Lord says, let me give you a gift over Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the gift of shifting into this new place that I've called you to. So don't be surprised if some of the days over this holiday season, you're fasting while your family is eating. Mm -hmm. What's your problem? Why aren't you eating? That's Aunt Elsie's famous loaded mashed potatoes. You love those things. Why aren't you eating like everybody else? Because I'm not called to be like everybody else. I'm so <laughs> And the Lord says in 2022, do not expect your family to understand. Because what I call balance does not look like balance to man. The Lord says, in fact, what I call balance will look imbalanced to man every single time. I hear the Spirit of God say, the Lord Jesus' earthly family didn't even understand his call. Until after he died and rose again. Then they began to understand, truly 
what it was that the Father wanted to do through him. The Lord is saying in this hour, don't expect your family to understand what I'm calling you to. But the Lord is saying when the time comes and I begin to move through you like never before and I use you as an instrument of healing for your family, then they're going to begin to understand. Yes. Because the Lord says breakthrough doesn't come without sacrifice. The Lord says advancement doesn't come without surrender. The Lord says, stop trying to figure this out. It's going to be the opposite of what you think it's going to be. Just follow the leading of my spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, how can I know it's the leading of the Holy Spirit in the final days of this new year? Can I be honest with you, church? Does it feel like a cheese grater on your flesh? <laughs> if it feels like a cheese grater on the flesh, you're probably hearing the voice of God. I'm being honest with you but the Lord is saying the time is coming where that's going to feel less abrasive and more joyous less difficult and more intimate and the Lord is saying if you will just surrender to him you're going to go from oh what did God just say to really hallelujah Praise the Lord. Because the Lord says the time is coming where we're really going to understand that every time he asks for something and we're willing to do it or give that thing in obedience, we get so much more of him that fills the place that that thing was dwelling in that it's going to get to the point where we're going to start asking him, God, what can I give up? God, what can I let go of? God, God, what, what, what can I, what can I surrender? What, what can I do? And, and many of us are going. That sounds really good, but I, ooh, wow, I just don't know about that. The Lord says, just take my spirit by the hand and let my spirit guide you. But the Lord says, this is the year that I want you to surrender control to me. And I feel like God is is bringing this word to a crescendo here. Maybe this is just for me. Maybe you've got this one figured out. But I heard the Lord saying just a little bit ago, I want you to surrender control to me. <laughs> and the Lord says, every person in this room has their own version of control. Some are just louder than others. Because if I said to you, you know, think of somebody in this congregation that, that likes to try to keep things under control. You might immediately start thinking of folks when the Spirit of God sees everybody in this house. When I say that, we all have our own version of control. We all have the way that we try to keep our life neat and tidy. We all have the things that we do to try to keep things in the order that we want them in. And I see the Holy Spirit blowing in this new year like a violent wind. And Holy Spirit's going to blow some things right out of your life. And the Holy Spirit's going to blow some new things in. Because we're going to understand in this new year that those are of the spirit that are of the spirit are like the wind. When a man on the water has a sailboat and he wants to catch the wind, he has to put up the sail. He cannot control where the wind takes him. He can only harness it and go in the direction the wind is blowing. The Lord said, this is the year to let go of the rudder and put up your sail and let the wind of my spirit take you where I want you to go. And the Lord said, for some of you, your version of control has made you miserable. Mm -hmm. He says, for some of you, your version of control has made you miserable. The Lord says, I want to take you from misery to joy. As you let go of control, the Lord said, there's going to be a joy in that. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Don't fear. The Lord says, I know you better than you know yourself. So my plans for you are better than what you could come up with on your own. Mm -hmm. yeah. So don't go into this new year like this, holding on tightly to things. Go into this new year like this and trust God that no matter what happens, he's a loving father that has your best interests in mind. Can I hear an amen? Amen. 
Amen. Maybe maybe this word was only for me. No. You know, no. did it resonate in anybody else's yeah. spirits? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If it resonated in your spirit, give God the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. One more thing, unless Holy Spirit says there's more. Holy Spirit says this is the year that I am pouring out the spirit of Issachar over my people. Yeah. The spirit of Issachar had three main aspects. Those of the tribe of Issachar that came to help David, who is a picture of Jesus, be raised up into his prophetic destiny. Think about that one for just a moment. They were scholars in the word. They understood the times and the seasons and the calling of God on their life. And they were blessed with the wealth of the seas and of the sands. The Lord says this year, I'm pouring out the spirit of Issachar on my people. The Lord says, I want you to be a people of the word this year. I want you to study the word like never before. Because the Lord says the spirit of deception is coming upon the church. The Lord says, we're about to live out Matthew 24. Do not be deceived and do not let your love wax cold. When they say he's over here or he's over here, stay in the secret place. I do. The Lord said, secondly, it's going to be a year of moving in the Holy Spirit. You're going to discern and understand the times and the seasons ordained by the Spirit of God. And you're going to walk in them and help others walk in them. And the Lord says, and thirdly, in this upcoming year, if we honor him with the way he blesses us according to his word, the Lord's going to begin pouring out the wealth of the wicked and the righteous. Amen. The Lord's going to begin pouring out the wealth of the seas and of the sands. Yes. Now notice that I mentioned the wealth blessing last. Mm -hmm. If Jesus is our bridegroom, if Jesus is our master, then money is our servant. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yes. Amen. And if we are a people of the word and a people of the Holy Spirit, then we'll be a steward of the gift. That's right. Amen. And we'll realize that everything he gives us is to use for the king in his kingdom. Amen. Do we have earthly needs? Absolutely. But God wants to bless some to be funders of his end times movements. Come on. Amen. Come on. Does anybody receive that? Amen. Don't take that out of balance with some of the out of balance wealth words you've heard. Mm -hmm. That's not the heart of God. And if you know me, that's not my heart. Mm -hmm. The Lord is saying to some, you're going to walk completely differently in this new year. You know what I see for you, young man? I see a toddler toddling who is crawling. But then all of a sudden I see that toddler stand up and begin to walk. And I see that toddler become a man, mighty and strong. The Lord says, that's you in this upcoming year. You're going to walk upright and you're going to walk as a mighty man of valor. Yes. Yes. Come on. This is what I see for you, son. This is what I see. God wants to move that from here to here. Because God says, this is the year where you're going to spread your eagle swings. He says, it's not going to be easy. But he says, this is the year it's going to begin to happen for you. The Lord says, as you cross over into the new year, I'm putting behind you a barrier. And that barrier is going to keep the past from rushing up on you again. And the Lord says, you're going to move in the new thing that I have for you. Do you receive that? Okay. The Lord has a word for you guys. Hold on for just a moment, okay? Because the Lord has a word for you guys. Blessing will be in the obedience. Blessing will come through obedience. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. Many people's destinies are tied in years. When I see you moving forward this new year as a bride adorned, you're in white and you're without spot and wrinkle. That's what I see. And I see you walking down the aisle to the Jesus adorned as the bridegroom. 
That's what the Lord says I want to do in me this year. He says, you will walk out the song of songs with them. He says, dance with me, O lover of my soul. Move forward. When the temptation comes to back off, don't do it. When the temptation comes to back off, don't do it. This is an important year to know. You receive that? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I hear the Lord saying that this is a year in this upcoming year where we're going to see God restore youth back to this house. That we are going to see young people come back into this house. Can I hear an amen? amen. The Lord and God says that the young people that are here right now, we're going to see God move in them mightily. Now, you know what that tells me? That tells me that spiritual parents in this house are going to begin coming into their ministry of spiritual parenting. That on Sunday morning, spiritual parents, you're going to have a whole lot of young people to minister to. Let me say that again. Sunday morning, spiritual parents, you're going to have a whole lot of people to minister to. Because the Lord says some of you are pregnant, seasoned, and overdue. And it's time to birth that babe of wisdom and pour that out on a young generation. The Lord says your greatest ministry is yet ahead. The Lord says your greatest ministry is yet ahead because the two of you have huge spiritual parenting hearts. The Lord said you found your mission. You found your mission field. The Lord says he's bringing it to you this year. Get ready. And the mama heart that you've got, Karen, the Lord says, I've given you a mama heart. And your heart has been crying out for mothering opportunities. I've got all this time, Lord. I got all this time. What are we going to do? I got all this time. I got an amazing husband. We got all this time. God says, I'm going to send you sons and daughters. He says, you're ready. It's time. Coming out from behind, out to the front. The Lord is saying, Amen. How do you receive that in the Lord? The Lord is saying, It's time. I see the Lord saying, For a lot of people, you're going to get off the roller coaster this year. I hear the Lord saying, For several people, you're going to get off the roller coaster this year. I hear the Lord saying, For others, you're going to come under his headship this year. I hear the Lord saying, like never before. He says, some of you just haven't felt protected and you haven't felt covered. And the Lord said, I'm going to bring you under that headship this year. That covering this year like never before. And I'm going to repair the broken walls around your life. They had to repair the broken walls in Nehemiah's day because the enemy could just come right in any way they wanted to. No walls, no gates. God says, I'm going to build those safe boundaries around you again. The Lord is saying for some people in this room. How many received that in the Lord? Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you guys to come forward. You guys were obedient and you stayed today. I'm proud of you. You got stuff going on. You got a move coming. You got a lot going on, but you stayed. And I'm so proud of you guys for doing that. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to come a little more forward. And, and I'm going to ask anyone that feels led, let's come up. Let's come up. Woo! Wow. Oh, and we're going to, ooh, we're going to pray for these guys. Anyone who feels led, come on up. Come on up. Ooh, hallelujah. Ooh, and, and God's just going to, I feel like God's going to popcorn some words for these guys. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. There are times 
when the Lord says it's time to leave your father's house. Mm -hmm. He did it to Abraham. He said it was time to leave the father's house mm -hmm. because the Lord knew that in the father's house, Abraham would never become Abraham. Mm -hmm. That Abraham would stay stuck in everything that was his father. God is calling you to a new place. God is moving you out of the familiar. God is moving you into a new season. And I see in the Lord and the Spirit multiple changes all around you. You're not only coming into a new year, you're coming into a new geographic location, you're coming into new work. But I also hear the Lord say, I have a church for you. I hear the Lord say, I have a church for you. Now, the Lord says, I see you with bags in your hands. Some of them are bags in the natural. You've got to bring clothes. You've got, you've got to bring money. You've got to bring stuff. You've got to bring phone chargers. You've got to bring all this stuff. But I also see spiritual bags in your hands. Some are good and some are not. The Lord says, you've got some spiritual baggage that I want you to let go of. And I don't want it to come to Texas with you. He says, Texas is the Lone Star State, but you're not going to be Lone Stars anymore. The Lord says, I do not want you to take the spiritual mentalities that you have had as you've lived up here down there with you. The Lord says, I want to bring unity spiritually in your marriage. And in your household, the Lord says, I have a church for you that I want you to surrender to. The Lord says, I've got a calling that I want you to step into. The Lord says, don't you dare go down there with the spiritual baggage that you had up here. Don't take it with you. Don't put it in the car. Don't pack it up. Don't bring it with you. Leave it by the side of the road. Because the Lord says, I'm doing a new thing. And the Lord says, don't you dare get down there. And go, well, you know, we're, we're going to start looking for a church next week, next month. You know, when we get settled in in 2023, God says you start seeking. And you will seek it and you will find it, the Lord says. I'm going to open up the door. And he says, I'm going to open it up in a way that you're going to know it is me. Scott and Karen, who were over off to your side, met my wife at Walmart. She was wearing a Jesus type t-shirt. And God used that to bring them here and now they're spiritual parents in the house. God says, I will direct you. I will direct you. I will direct you. I hear the Lord say, man of God, I want you to be the spiritual leader of your house. That's a shifting I want to bring over this relationship. And that's not condemnation. That's just a word. Okay. The Lord says, I want you, the moment you step on Texas soil, soil to be a mighty man of valor and yes. lead your family yes. spiritually. Yes. The very first time that I met you, if I'm correct on this, you were asking me a question. When I went to respond to you, I felt my spirit wanting to respond to you and say, Pastor, Oh, yes, you. yes, yes, Lord. And I didn't even realize who you were yet. Then I saw Naomi and I pieced it together. Okay. You've got a call for ministry on your life. Yes. You cannot run from it any longer because Jesus is coming back soon. Yes. You'll run right out of it if you run from it any longer. Yes. And I hear the Lord say, though, they'll never call you pastor until you are the high priest of your own household. He said, I want to put things in order in your life. Okay? The Lord says in love, you can wear the t-shirt, but I want you to wear it on your heart. The Lord says it's time. I want you to be the high priest of your household, which means woman of God, you're going to have to give that up. But the Lord says, you're ready. And the Lord says, I'm putting this relationship in order. I'm putting this relationship in order. I hear the Lord say, I'm going to give you single eyes, dove's eyes. And your eyes are going to no longer go all over the place. 
the Lord says, You're, you know what that word means. The Lord says, I don't need to, to, to dig deeper into that word. God says, I'm going to give you single dove's eyes. And the Lord says, you're going to see him. You're going to see your wife. You're going to see your family. You're going to see your ministry. The Lord says, I'm giving you single-minded focus. I'm giving you eyes that are going to look now in the right direction, the Lord says. The Lord says, I am sending you down there on purpose for a purpose. Man of God, don't go down there as you stand right now. Go down there with a different mindset. Come on. God says, I want to strengthen this marriage. I want to bless this marriage. God says, woman of God, I want to make this marriage the marriage of your dreams. Yes. Woman of God says, so, the word of the Lord says, so many nights you cried out to me. So many nights you said, God, what's going on? So many nights. You had to make even bargains with yourself in your own minds. But you stayed in your faith. And the Lord says, I want to bless that. I want to bless that. I want to bless that. I hear the Lord. The Lord's funny. I hear the Lord saying out of the old country western song, Stand by your man. <laughs> Stand by your man. Because the Lord says he's becoming the man you've always known. Stand by your man. But the Lord says, don't forget you're married to, to Jesus first. Uh, but I hear God say, I'm doing this. I'm bringing things into alignment. I'm bringing things into alignment. Here in Illinois, they're all over, all around you. God goes, it's God saying, I'm bringing it into alignment. I also hear the Lord saying in Texas, guard who your daughter is around. Yes. I hear the Lord say, protect her, keep her safe, because not everybody you're going to come in contact with is going to be what they appear to be, even in the church. The Lord says, protect her and guard her, because she has a special call on her life that the enemy would love to get in and start messing up. She needs dad's love more than you've ever poured out on her And God says, I'm giving you, as the Lord says, I'm giving you those dove's eyes, that single focus. The Lord says, I'm releasing more of a daddy love inside of you for your daughter. And the Lord says, I can give you the ability to love your children that you didn't receive even in your own home growing up. The Lord says, I can make a fatherless man a mighty father. I can make a motherless woman a mighty mother. Okay, but that father word, that's for you. Okay, the mother part was just an extension of that. But the Lord says, I am healing and restoring the brokenness in your heart. And you're going to be able to love your daughter more than ever before. You've never not loved her, but there's been blockages. And the Lord says, I'm going to remove those blockages. The Lord says, I'm even going to remove the blockages in your love for your wife. The Lord says, and I see a divine partnership coming in this marriage. Yes. A divine partnership. Yes. Not one crying out and the other one maybe listening. But what I'm hearing is a divine partnership in this marriage. And I'm hearing the Lord say that generational curses over the women in this family regarding marriage are broken. Yes. In the name of Jesus. And God says, I'm birthing what I really want marriage to be through you. Because the enemy chose someone for the curse to come through. God says, I was looking for someone for the blessing to come through. And I declare that person is you. Okay? I decree and declare right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth that the curse of the women in this family, and I'm not talking about current marriage for the rest of lives. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the generational stuff, okay? I declare that curse of looking for love in all the wrong places. For looking for in men what wasn't gotten from dad and all that other stuff. I declare that's broken through the blood of Jesus right now. And I declare God's changing your mindsets. And you're going to see your husband not through the brokenness of what you've experienced with your own earthly dad. But I declare God is healing your heart and making you whole. And that you're going to love out of wholeness, not out of brokenness. And you're going to see your husband differently than you ever saw him before. 
And I command that dysfunction to break in the name of Jesus. Where what the two of you went through as kids playing in the dysfunction in this marriage. I command it to be broken through the blood of Jesus right now. Thank you, Lord. I see the angels of the Lord going in front of you all the way down to Texas. And I see the angels of the Lord beginning to just put that home in order down there in Texas. If there's anything you're bringing with you that ties you to the negative things of the past, get rid of it. And when you get down there and you've got Naomi with you, man of God, take oil. We'll give you a, a container of anointing oil while you're here today. Pray through every room in that place and dedicate it to the Lord and ask God to make that a home for you guys. Because I hear the Lord say, I'm going to give you a home. You've known housing, you're going to have a home. And that's going to be completely different. And part of that's because of the marriage stuff God's doing, the ministry stuff that's going to happen, the spiritual oneness. But I see a, I see, I see a house coming. Your house. And God says, you've been asking. The Lord says, I'm breaking that spirit of poverty. And the Lord says, I'm breaking that spirit of renting. And that makes sense. In the name of the slaves, so it's a form of slavery, really, is what it is. And God says, I'm breaking that right now. God says, I'm breaking that right now. I see you in your own home and you're loving it. And there's peace there and there's God's security there. It's a home and it's yours. You can paint the walls. You can decorate it. You can do amazing things. And, and by the way, it's, it's nice. It's nice. I see that in the Lord. I, I see that in the Lord. I see that in the Lord. Woman of God, I hear the Lord say, delight yourself in me, and I'll give you the desires of your heart. But my way, God says, I got this. The Lord says, you're going to stop feeling like an orphan. You're going to be like a dog. The Lord says, you're no more going to feel like you're looking at the 